Although these days he plays mostly out of enjoyment, Stephen spent 20 years as a professional musician in Europe. In 2005, he moved to BC with his family and started a new life as a realtor, where his knowledge of Dutch and German comes in handy. He and his sons play in a variety of local ensembles, but also find time to play jazz standards together at home. I've been playing uh, since 1967, and uh, I was a little kid in grade seven, and I had an opportunity to take uh, band classes after school, and decided to uh, take, the, take that opportunity. Um, and someone asked me, what instrument do you want to play? And I didn't really know much about instruments at that point, so I asked my mother, there was this great album that we had at home, and I said, uh, it was an album called The Unforgettable Freddie Gardner. And I said, to, I went home when we had this opportunity to take band, and I said to my mother, well, what does Freddie Gardner play? And she didn't know either. So we went and got the record cover, we looked at the record cover, and on the back it said, Freddie Gardner played alto sax. So the next day I went back to school and said, uh, I'd like to play alto sax. Well, the teacher, who was a clarinet and sax and flute player himself, said, oh no, you're not going to start on alto sax, you're going to start on clarinet. And that was the greatest moment of my life, because that really was the start of my career. In the end, the fact that I could that I ended, started on clarinet and then went on to saxophone and flute, but the fact that I could play all three instruments was really the, uh, the ticket for, uh, for a, a pretty good uh, career in theater. I was uh, very fortunate to be playing in New York for uh, seven months uh, with a European theater show called Pomp, Duck and Circumstance, and uh, during that show, uh, the one of the group of artists that were in the show got an opportunity to play on the Dave Letterman show. And so they uh, asked me to come up and play with them. So I went out and rehearsed the band, the Letterman band, and then performed the show. I think it was, I think it was Thanksgiving 95 in New York. So, and the, the biggest thrill of that was not just playing with uh, Paul Schaefer and the guys and you know, being on stage with Letterman, but it was, I, I can remember as a little boy, um, um, eight years old, watching the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show as a little kid, and it was the same, where Letterman taped, in those days, I don't know if it still is, um, is right on Broadway, it's, it's the Ed Sullivan Theatre, it's the same theatre. So, you know, here I am, eight years old in London, Ontario, watching the Beatles on that stage, and, uh, you, know, you know, 40 years later, 50 years later, I'm on the same stage playing in front of, you know, millions of people on the Letterman show. So that was probably one of the, the biggest thrills of my career.
together with Craig Thompson, I run the um, Jazz Jam session at the Rotary Center. So every Thursday we, we do uh, you know, a jazz thing with lots of performers from all, o all over the city. And uh, so I love doing that, but I like the other things I do as well. You know, playing in the or amateur orchestra, playing in the Okanagan Symphony, as uh, I'm the second clarinet sub there, and um, the concert band and various other projects. I'm, I'm a fairly broad uh, player, you know, I do a lot of different things. And uh, so I like them all, but this is probably the thing that's closest to my heart. I mean, playing with your kids and uh, you know trying to keep up with them because really they're they're pretty fabulous players and uh, so it's that's a, just a wonderful thing to do at the rotary um, uh, jam session they are the, usually the rhythm section there so then i'm playing bass so you know we're sort of the, the rhythm section there and that's developing um, it would be great if we could take this another level you know get start doing some festivals and things like that that would be great you know, next summer i don't know playing the vineyards uh, I think it's grown, but I'm not sure if it's because of me or it's because of them teaching me. Um, they've got a great school teacher uh, here in, in the Okanagan, a guy named Craig Thompson, who's a wonderful saxophone player. And he's taken both my boys under his wing and has been teaching them a lot. And I think they've learned a great deal from, from him um, as well. And, uh, and from just the, the broad experience that they've had here playing in many different school groups and in some semi-professional groups and actually professionally they've played a number of gigs as well. Um, Alex does a solo piano thing at Urban Barn, Urban Fair I should say, Urban Fair and um, they've backed up Anna Jackson one time actually on, uh, on a gig so who's quite a well-known performer here in town and so you know they've, they've got a lot of experience. Kelowna has offered us a great amount of musical uh, opportunities and uh, so I think they've grown through all of those things, but I like to think that their, uh, their exposure to jazz probably came through me. I'm my own melody And all the little things that make it complete To hold me with you perfectly this is how I dance, falling with all of these stars to see. You are the summer breeze that stays with me through the cold. You keep me warm and always know when to be here if I need you to hold me closer to all of the sun in my world for you Oh, 
For more information on today's artists, contact them on the web or via email. It starts take England 400 years ago. Shakespeare wrote Hamlet, his philosophy in prose. Tolstoy was God. You say love, please.